Okay, friends, I've got a little bit more information on the force reset trigger and solvent trap saga that's going on right now. Uh, as you know, we've been working on a whole lot of stuff. John Crump's been working on some stuff from Ammo Land. Um, I've been pulling in some stuff from different people who have reached out to me. And yesterday, I actually put a video out that talked to a gentleman that I referred to as Mr. X over in South Carolina whose home was visited by the ATF. They left a card, but he did not speak to them while he was not at home at the time, so he did not speak to them. So this guy mentioned to me that he reached out to a particular organization to get some advice from them. And at the time, I didn't want to disclose who the organization was because I wanted to not only confirm who the organization was, but also to get a statement from the company out of fairness to them because I felt like anything that I would have put out based on the very tiny bit of information that I had received was not fair to the organization because it probably could paint them in a bad picture based on what, again, the little bit of information that I received. I'm glad I waited out of fairness to them because I got an official statement from them. Just for you guys to know, the company is U.S. Law Shield. Uh, as you know, guys know, U.S. Law Shield is a pretty decent sized company out there that provides carry insurance. Obviously, they have tons of legal counsel out there that, that help them, represent them, and whatnot. So I reached out to them early this morning because I felt like I needed to get that official statement from them. And I spoke to Christy Elrod who was the Vice President of Communications, and she was able to provide me this afternoon with an official statement from them, and I'd like to read this to you. She states that, we always encourage our members to obey the law. With respect to this issue, I can confidently state that it is the position of U.S. Law Shield and its independent program attorneys that members are not legally required to turn over items to the ATF, FBI, local law enforcement, or any agency without a warrant. I'm going to read the rest of this, but I want to repeat this statement because this is very, very critical, very important, and it kind of contradicts a little bit of what I said in my video yesterday. So this is good clarification for those of you guys that are clients of U.S. Law Shield. Again, it states that members are not legally required to turn over items to the ATF, FBI, local law enforcement, or any agency without a warrant. She continues to say that with respect to any specific incident, the conversations between our members and their counsel are protected by the attorney-client privilege, and we will respect the confidentiality of those conversations, stated by Kirk Evans, president of U.S. Law Shield. Essentially, what they're saying there is whatever conversation took place with Mr. X, as I described in my video, and whatever attorney he spoke to is protected by attorney-client privileges, and they're not going to speak on that. Um, so it, it is possible, and I'm supposing here, it's possible that the attorney either misspoke or Mr. X may have misunderstood. So there's a, a whole litany of things that could actually be in play right here. And I don't want to make any wild assumptions to get any one party in trouble other than the fact that they are making it very clear that that conversation is confidential to that gentleman who contacted them. And that's where it stops. To further clarify on that note, because every member's situation is unique, U.S. Law Shield independent program attorneys will always discuss the available legal options with our members based on the individual facts of each circumstance. At this time and based on the information shared, we are confident that neither U.S. Law Shield nor its independent program attorneys would issue a blanket statement that members are legally required to surrender their items to the ATF or law enforcement in general without a warrant. That is a great statement, and I think that's a good message to follow anybody else out there that's in that same line of work. And for that matter, any attorneys out there who are counseling any of their, uh, their clients. Because I think it's important that we as Second Amendment advocates realize that it's not beneficial to anybody, including our families and loved ones, to try to fight this fight from inside a prison cell. This is very serious. The implications... If the ATF continues their bullying efforts, some people could spend some not so quality time behind bars and a lengthy amount of time, up to 10 years in this. So I don't think attorneys want to talk to their clients through a phone and glass in between them. I don't think that's the way that they want to communicate to try to fight this fight. Uh, I'm not giving advice on this in any kind of way, but I think it's important that we understand that there are reasons why attorneys tell you things in a certain way. I think they're playing the long game in some cases and realize that there could come a time where they're going to be defending you. So they want you to give them everything they can to properly defend you, which means to get you off. 
They're not caving to the ATF. They're simply telling you what to do to stay out of jail so that we can fight this fight and in the end win. And that's the ultimate goal is we want to win. So I think that um, this is good advice. I'm so glad that uh, Christy L. Robb was able to get clarification on this because it does make me feel better about them as a company. Um, what I was most fearful of is having a company who was respected in the Second Amendment community running around out there telling everybody to cave to the ATF and give everything up. And it does not appear that that's the case. In fact, quite the contrary. So again, thank you for your statement, Christy, on this. And those of you who are clients of U.S. Law Shield, rest easy on that. But that is the company that I was referencing in my video yesterday. I just didn't want to put that information out there because I felt like it was unfair to U.S. Law Shield. And I'm so glad that I waited. I'm sorry, I thought this was...